Hi, I'm Susan Taylor with Scripps Health in San Diego, California. Please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel. We've got great information for you featuring the latest technology, our stellar doctors, and inspiring patient stories. Now, healing comes in many forms, and here at Scripps, we have a team of two-legged and four-legged volunteers who give of themselves to help patients heal physically and emotionally. Here to talk about the Scripps Volunteer Program is Jill Sandman, who is the Manager of Volunteer Services for the North Region, and Rosemary Van Gorder, who's been a Scripps Pet Therapy Volunteer since 2007, and she's here with her dog, Amber, who's been delighting patients since 2011. Also, therapy dogs come in all shapes and sizes. Also joining us is Jojo. Can we just have a collective aw? How Aww. cute Aww. are these two? <laughs> Um, Jill, why don't you talk about the, uh, the volunteer program at Scripps? Sure. So we have a wonderful volunteer program. Um, we have volunteers that obviously come as canine therapy volunteers, but we have volunteers throughout the hospital and throughout our entire system. We have volunteers who come and support the nursing departments and the emergency room and the ICUs, and a lot of times they're an extra pair of legs and hands for our staff. We have volunteers that come in and do more clerical type duties that support our different offices and departments, our foundation, our marketing department. And we have volunteers that do um, really fun homemade crafting items. Um, every newborn at Scripps La Jolla gets a knitted hat. We have um, tray favors that go on the meal, meal trays for our patients. So there's just a variety of ways to get involved as a volunteer at Scripps. And volunteers are there. They're the first people you see when you come in the door, right? Often, yes. We All of our hospitals are equipped with volunteers at the information desk to greet you, to escort you throughout the hospital. Um, and often they're the first person that a patient sees and often the last person that they see upon discharge. And we have literally thousands of volunteers at Scripps. Yes. In fact, in 2018, we had uh, 2,100 volunteers contribute to our organization. And volunteering has been part of the mission of Scripps for how long? Well, I'm pleased to say that for uh, La Jolla, it's, we're on 90 years this 90 year. 90 years, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah, so the auxiliary started um, back in 1929, so um, pretty remarkable. And then um, with the Mercy Hospitals, their legacy even goes further back with the Sisters of Mercy. That's phenomenal. And how many hours a week do volunteers put in on average? Mm -hmm. Typically, they do one four-hour shift a week, so it's really manageable to fit into your life. We um, schedule you with a consistent schedule, so you know the days that you volunteer. So if your day is Monday, noon to four, you can make that happen in your lifestyle. So I really like that for people's convenience. Some people will pick up additional shifts, and that's, that's quite all right. We, we welcome that. Usually our canine therapy volunteers will come in for a two-hour shift. The dogs get pretty exhausted after um, an hour or two of walking around the whole hospital. So talk about our four-legged ones, Rosemary. Um, what about the Scripps therapy dogs? What kind of training do they go through? The therapy dogs for Scripps all are very obedient dogs. They've had to go through the American Kennel Club Canine Good Citizen exam which there's a course they can take as well, but it's a testing process that tests the dogs in 10 elements. One being very friendly if they're approached by a stranger, uh, friendly if they see another dog, happy if they will sit on command, walk loosely on a leash, walk around a crowded area. Um, in addition, they need to be able to sit quietly for a three minute separation from their owner. Though we're not separated from our dogs on the shift, um, in case of emergencies, I think they feel like we need to be able to have a dog that will be reasonably calm away from their owner. And then when they come into the hospital, they're also evaluated. If I can go ahead and continue yes. on with that. It also uses the Canine Good Citizen 10-step program also, and then a lot of elements about the hospitals, such as going in and out of elevator, in and out of the doorways, being around moving objects like gurneys, beds, wheelchairs, IV poles, um, even the beds moving up and down could be chaotic for an animal. So the dogs need to make sure that they can do that and be putting it themselves under all the stress of the hospital environment. So this is just not, you just can't bring any dog into the hospital. This is some very rigorous training that they have yes. to go through. Yes, mm -hmm. it is, like you said, for any size dog. So there's little ones, big ones. And they, the main thing is they need to be friendly and outgoing. Um, can't just be a robotic obedient dog. So very friendly dog and then one that will be 
obeying and behaving during the whole time because they're put under a lot of different stresses mm -hmm. and circumstances. Mm -hmm. The, the dogs are not just in hospitals, they're also in other parts of the whole Scripps system. Right. So perhaps at the um, Radiation Oncology Center over at the Scripps and mm -hmm. Anderson Cancer Program, in there the patients are not in beds. So they may be in the initial waiting room with their regular clothes on waiting for their appointment. So dogs are in the lobby area there. And then when the patients go to the back, they change in their gowns. There's a small waiting area, not much bigger than this room, and the dogs are back there too. Um, they can also go up on the garden roof um, to be with patients, but it's primarily the waiting areas. And that's been a really nice bonus to have mm -hmm. the dogs there. Yeah, it's really rewarding because a lot of the patients are regulars. They're coming on a frequent basin, mm -hmm. basis for mm -hmm. treatment. So they really form a relationship with the, the canine therapy mm -hmm. team that comes and sees them. So for the, the two-legged and the four-legged volunteers, what is it that they bring patients? What do they mm -hmm. offer? I think they offer the patient a way to just stop being centered on themselves. It's easy if you're in the hospital to be feeling pain or to just be irritated or maybe it's too cold or the food, you know, hasn't come yet and maybe they're bored or they're waiting for a family member. Or they're stressed. And they're stressed. Yes, being in the yeah. hospital is being stressed. Yes. And, and missing their own pet. And missing their own yeah. pet. That's the other thing is it brings a little bit of home to them if they're mm -hmm. dog owners. And then to walk in with a dog is just, for some people that didn't know we have this program here, they're just amazed to see a dog walk in. I mean, I've been where I walked by a room and the patient was on the cell phone. I thought, well, I didn't want to interrupt. And I heard this, wait, 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 I'll call you back. Come back with your dog. She said, I was so excited. I didn't know we had dogs here. Um, and then just to see patients and their visitors, or maybe they have children that are visiting. Mm -hmm. Um, the kids just can't believe it. They might be in the waiting area. So if it's the intensive care unit and the kids are in the waiting area, to walk in with a dog just brings that bit of home to them. So it reduces anxiety. Yes. Reduces stress. Takes your mind off of pain. Mm -hmm. um, what other things does it offer? They allow the patient to not be just centered on themselves and maybe their pain or their discomfort and brings that sense of home. If they're an animal lover to see an animal come in um, depending on the size of the dog, like if it was Jojo, they could put a towel on the bed and Jojo could be on the bed. If it's a big dog such as Amber, there's a chair next to the bed. We can put a towel on the chair and come up on the bed. Um, and the patients can pet them that way. And then the dog, since they are well trained with the big dogs, she can stand on command. So to mm -hmm. be able to stand next to the bed rather than automatically sitting or laying down, um, she'll stand so that the patient can reach them as well. And it's a nice counterbalance to, to the apprehension mm -hmm. of being in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of our patients, you know, they're lonely or oh. even bored. And, you know, some of our um, patients that are on bed rest before having a child, um, you know, they're often here for several weeks. And so it's just nice. I mean, especially if you're just waiting to, to have your baby and for the most part, you're healthy. Um, to have that break up your day really makes all the difference for them. And what do um, what does the staff get out of this? <laughs> of, of the two-legged and the four-legged <laughs> yeah, volunteers? The staff love seeing the animals. And mm -hmm. there are certain ones um, that just they know who's coming on what day. They'll have, sometimes they have treats in the nurses' mm -hmm. stations to give to them. And then you have to decide if you want your dog to get treats that day. But um, the nurses and the doctors, I've had doctors that have come up and have just been surrounding the dog because they've had a particularly hard day or an, you know, an ER doctor is walking somewhere and the same thing. So the staff love it. It, yeah. it brings a point of home to them too. And yeah. it reduces the stress for the staff Absolutely. because it's very stressful to yes. be working in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, um, we have some physicians that will give us doctor orders for a patient. So we get an official slip from the physician saying that this patient needs canine therapy visits. So Which is it's great. nice to have the support of our physicians mm -hmm. and our staff. And yes, the staff really appreciate um, getting to see the dogs. I mean, their jobs can be very difficult and they can have very stressful um, cases going on with the patients. So having the dogs come in really help our staff too. There's nothing like that unconditional love. When I initially started, I just thought it was pretty special to bring a dog in to volunteer and kind of thought that was kind of unique. Um, but what I ended up getting from it was just an amazing sense of respect and love for that animal that what my dog, just our household pet, just gave to these people have changed their day. 
Um, I think that was a really important thing that I got out of it, was just seeing what my animal could do for somebody. Um, and then I think it's nice to connect with people, and your dog's kind of the tool to connect. Mm -hmm. And just like there are other volunteers without the dogs, the, vol the patient might tell us something they need as well. So we can go to the nurse's station to bring that up. Just one more person that goes in and interacts to help out that patient. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you'd like to become a volunteer, we're going to tell you how to do that in a couple of minutes. So just hold that thought um, coming up what you need to do in order to become a volunteer uh, with Scripps, whether you're going to be a two-legged volunteer or bring a four-legged volunteer in to, to help as well. So um, just grab a pen and a paper. We'll come back to that in just a couple of minutes. Um, what happens when you actually walk into a patient's room? What kind of safety precautions do you take for the patients when you're bringing in um, a, a pet therapy dog? What I usually do is I'm just approaching the room as, I, as quickly as I can get a lay of the land. I see if the patient has an IV, what side of the bed that IV is on, if there's anything else, if there's a catheter bag, if the bed rails um, are next to the wall, where the chairs are in the room, just everything to make it easier for me to go in and see that patient with my dog. If the IV is in the right arm, I might go around the bed to the other side so that they don't have to worry about that. Any of the tubing in the cardiac wing, there's a lot of tubing. So I think it's really important to know what the limitations are for that patient as well. Or if they've had anything with their joints, so they're in a splint or they're up in traction, to just know what would be the easier side of the bed to go on to see that patient. And then I quickly look at the floor. Are there any messy bandages on the floor? any medications, anything else. The dogs are trained to not pick up these items, but I still like to know so that I can pay attention where these items might be. And then also, um, are, there's, there's hand sanitizers, yes. and then what about, talk about bathing yes. the dogs as well. And then all the dogs are required to have a bath within 24 hours of coming to volunteer, mm -hmm. so that they are as germ-free as they can be. And then after seeing a patient, we offer hand sanitizer for that patient. Some people bring dog wipes and wipe down their dog afterward. Um, I make it a habit when I go home to wash her because any germs she might have picked up on her feet or on mm -hmm. her fur, I'd like washed off before we go into our own house. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then the dogs are required to have annual physicals and have all their immunizations mm -hmm. up to date. The vets also have to screen not just for the physical issues that the dog might have, but the emotional. Because mm -hmm. as dogs get older, they might get a little more nippy or just you know a little more crotchety and not want to do the work so all of our dogs have our vets signing out that they're emotionally and physically able to do the job mm -hmm. and Jill you have somebody who who handles the dogs system-wide yes. right? who's constantly yeah. monitoring all of them mm -hmm. so uh, Letitia Elias is our volunteer coordinator and our canine therapy coordinator for the system we have currently 65 um, volunteer or canine therapy volunteers and she works with them um, to bring them on with the onboarding. So all of our volunteers will attend orientation. Um, as Rosemary mentioned, they'll be evaluated. We make sure that the, the environment is right for that dog and that the dog handler. Um, sometimes the dog's great, but the hospital environment's not for them. And so we have them evaluated. And then, of course, we stay up on their annual um, different uh, immunizations for dogs and make sure that they're they're safe to be in the hospital and we want to of course keep our dogs and our volunteers safe. And then Rosemary you mentioned this but if somebody wants the dog to come snuggle in bed mm -hmm. I mean that's okay. It, it all depends. I okay. mean if the patient is able to have the dog snuggle in bed then yes it's okay. The bed needs to be covered with either yeah, a towel, towel or a sheet so mm -hmm. the bed has to be protected and the volunteer knows where to get that and then how to remove that um, piece of linen as well. And then it just depends on the dog. I mean, not every dog wants to come up on a bed and cuddle. Mm -hmm. And other dogs are really good at it. Some are better just being held by the owner and put that way. Um, so it's really kind of, while we have a set standard that we would go do, it can change at any minute depending on that patient. Um, I've had cardiac patients that are going for walks around the floor and they just want us to walk with them. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. And because studies show that if you redu reduce stress for a patient in the hospital, what happens? They will go home sooner. Mm -hmm. They heal faster, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's great for their physical well-being, mm -hmm. emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. also good for their financial, financial. well-being. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that's Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Jill, the teams have logged how many patient visits? 
Ooh, it was 12,000 in 2018. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, the, the last year they put in two, about 2,700 hours, our canine therapy volunteers. That's phenomenal. Why is it so important to have this really big volunteer program across the Scripps system? Well, of course, you know, our volunteers are our community members. Um, they're also a lot of times grateful patients. Um, the history of hospitals is completely rooted in volunteerism. I mean, it really is where, where hospitals started. And so it's part of our culture and it's definitely part of Scripps culture. Um, we are very fortunate to have all of our leadership um, really respect volunteers. In fact, many of them are volunteers themselves, not necessarily with Scripps, but in other organizations. Um, what our volunteers learn is also very beneficial to them personally. And we like to know that, you know, these could be our future healthcare providers. And so by us, you know, supporting them in their endeavors, in their education, um, and potentially being a physician or a nurse, um, we're giving back to our future. All right, so we, um, we mentioned this a couple of minutes ago. Let's come back to this. If you want to be a volunteer at Scripps, um, what's the process? What do you need to do? Okay, so you visit our website um, and you Which just is go Scripps.org. Scripps yeah, and there is, um, on the very top of the webpage, it says for volunteers. So it's really easy to kind of find out where to go. Um, and then it, it's very helpful if you know which site, which hospital you'd like to volunteer with, or if it's a clinic, um, it's good for you to know what's gonna be the easiest for you to get to. Um, where, where would you be able to go on a weekly basis? And then based on that, you can, the website can guide you to that email or phone number to call, and then we'll connect you. And usually the next steps are filling out an application, attending an orientation. You don't have to have any experience in healthcare. Um, and not all positions are directly related in healthcare. So even if you're somebody that's like, gosh, I was a teacher my whole life, I don't really see myself doing anything with healthcare, we still got a position for you. We can place Anyone will find what works for you. We just want to know that you can connect with people, that you um, have a goal to get something out of your volunteer experience and give back to the community. And is it the same um, place that you go to with regard to the four-legged volunteers as well? Absolutely. We do have an area on the website that specifically talks about canine therapy and Letitia Elias, who is our coordinator, she'll interact with you um, to determine before we kind of get you through the onboarding, we want to make sure that this is a good fit for you. So we generally start with the evaluation. She also needs to know that you've had that um, experience of canine good, the a good citizen um, is the prerequisite that you need that training course. Um, she can, if you're interested and you don't know how to tap into that, she can also guide you on how to take that course. Um, additionally, the dogs do need to be over a year old. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Rosemary, any final thoughts? I think it's a great opportunity to do something with your dog. So instead of leaving the house to go volunteer, I can bring my dog to come volunteer. And it's just a great bond to have with my own dog. And a great bond with the patients. It's a great bond with the patients. Absolutely. For the two-legged and the four-legged yeah. variety. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you both so much. And thanks to you two, because in addition to being so cute, you're also incredibly well behaved. <laughs> Uh, if you want more information about Scripps Volunteer Program, just click on the link or go to scripps.org forward slash video. If you want more critical information about your health, we take care of you from head to toe. Uh, please subscribe to our Scripps Health YouTube channel and follow us on social media at Scripps Health. I'm Susan Taylor. Thanks so much for joining us. It's our mission at Scripps to help you heal, enhance, even save your life.